Paul Murray, so much to talk about this evening, so let's get straight to it. Collectively, time to settle down about matters to do with just how in crisis the Abbott government is and just how bad that decision was about the Queen's husband getting a knighthood. For anyone who has missed the past two shows at exactly the time that I am speaking now, the top of the show, the first opportunity to open my mouth, the decision to make him a knighthood of Australia is ludicrous. It is indefensible. It is stupid. It is roll gold stupid and I have no idea what possessed him to do it, let alone who let the Prime Minister do it as well. But some perspective needs to be put into all of this. People have gone crazy trying to pretend that this is the single worst decision an Australian Prime Minister has made, well, in all of our lifetimes. As if somehow the decision has cost us billions of dollars or has resulted in a matter of life and death. It might be a political life and death we're talking about here, but some of the absolute crap that has been written tweeted, spoken about on radio, telly and even here has been astonishing. The Prime Minister made a very bad call. Is it terminal? I personally don't think so, but it is one that clearly an awful lot of people laughed at, and in my opinion rightly so. But could we please settle down? Because when we talk about bad calls that come from a Prime Minister's office, giving a knighthood to a bloke on the other side of the world who clearly doesn't deserve it, is not even in the same realm of decisions that have cost billions of dollars and countless lives. We are so quick to forget just what it was like for the past six years under the previous mob. Three decisions that come to mind that I think you could say to anyone the next time you see somebody hyperventilating on TV or radio about just how stupid this decision is. The Pink Bats decision. The Pink Bats decision, firstly, just to flood the market with a bunch of cowboys, resulted in four Australians losing their lives and a royal commission. Equally, there were dozens of businesses that went to the wall when the government turned the scheme off straight away. People had surplus stock and nowhere for it to go. That was because the previous mob had no experience in running an actual business. Then you have the live cattle trade, where there were the pictures on four corners and instantly we halted a trade that still to this day has ruined the lives of people, many people, still suffering those effects in the north of this country. But because they don't have Twitter, Facebook, or they're somehow not part of the lefty media establishment, we just pretend that nothing happened there. And then, of course, there is the decision about asylum seekers. As boring as this might be for some people to hear, the previous mob opened the door. The people smugglers started their evil trade again and in the process between that and 2013, a thousand people died trying to get into this country. They tried to get here by paying evil bastards who often didn't even get on the boats themselves. So just how bad a decision is, a decision to offer a bloody knighthood, as ridiculous, as indefensible, as stupid as it is, the previous mob made decisions that ruined businesses and opened the door that sadly, even after hundreds of people died, they kept going. You want to talk about a tin ear? You want to talk about people who were truly arrogant in the way they ran the country? I'll take the bloke who gives a knighthood to the Queen's husband over the previous two Prime Ministers. The truth is that the Prime Minister is in political trouble for his own decision-making, for his own poor salesmanship and probably for some of the advice that he gets. But the truth is that this bloke could cure cancer and it is never going to make it onto the front page. You see, the press gallery hated Tony Abbott. They also hated that, they, that uh, Tony Abbott took down two Labor Prime Ministers, but most chiefly took down their mate Kevin Rudd, particularly at the last election. What a surprise that Laurie Oakes has the shits with Tony Abbott. His chief informant from shadow foreign minister to foreign minister to prime minister in Kevin Rudd was killed off by Tony Abbott. What a surprise that the press gallery don't like Tony Abbott. But in case you think this is some sort of um, fantasy land that I'm living in, I want to tell you of a very clear example of double standards from the people who talk about politics all day, every day. 
Earlier in the year, the Prime Minister visited Australian troops, but due to security reasons, the media was not invited. This was the reaction, well, in one of the loudest of the lefty websites. Tony Abbott criticised for excluding Australian media from Baghdad visit. Well, guess what happened today? Bill Shorten visited the troops. The media was not invited for security reasons. The response of the press gallery today? Bill Shorten pays surprise visit to Australian soldiers in Iraq. Can we show that one more time, guys? The Tony Abbott reaction from the press gallery is to scream blue birder. The reaction for Bill Shorten? Well played, sir. That's part of the problem that Tony Abbott has to overcome. And it's one that he cannot solve because the fix is in with the lefties, the fix is in with the gallery, because their guys are not in charge. So, yes, the Prime Minister may get bad advice. Yes, the Prime Minister may well even have a gallery that he has to fight against. And yes, the Prime Minister made one heck of a stupid decision. But for God's sake, how does it compare to pink bats that, in part, killed four people and destroyed businesses? How does it compare to shutting off, because of a television show, an entire industry in rural Australia, let alone opening the door to asylum seekers and, more importantly, the evil bastards who they pay to try to get here that killed a 1,000 people? I'll take the bad knighthood any day. Can you know what you think? The hashtag PM Live, email PM Live at skynews.com.au. This and a whole lot more. And there's yet another example of double standards in the media. Believe it or not, I will defend Clive Palmer. That'll be up in a moment or two's time.